What's up, man? It's your boy Chaotic, and I just jumped off the porch with Dirty Glove Bastards. Feel like I'm walking in the L. Uh, if you want a better keeper, uh, better treat it like a princess. Uh. All right. We got Chaotic jumping off the porch with us today. What's good, my brother? What's going on with your game? Bula. Man, I'm just living life, man. You know what I'm saying? Being a blessing to others as usual. For sure, for sure. Yeah. It's a pleasure to have you on the porch with us today, man. It's a pleasure to be here, my brother. For real, for real. So what you been getting into, man? Man, I just been really like running around the universe, you know what I'm saying? Blessing the lives of many, man. You know what I'm saying? Creating beautiful pictures for people to look at, you know what I'm saying? Being in my bag like, 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 like clothing, you know what I'm saying? And I'm traveling with, you feel me? Like I just been really like just doing everything that God is allowing me to do in the universe. That's what I'm doing, you know? No, that's real. That's real. Sound like you real woke now. You on a different type of path. Yeah, man. You feel me? I used to be sleep on myself, man. And then, you know, I fell out the bed and woke up. You feel me? <laughs> what would you say woke you up? Oh, man. What would I say woke me up? The money. The money woke me up. You feel me? I was asleep. One day I was asleep and the money called me, woke me up out my sleep. And I ain't been back to sleep since. No, that's real. You heard me? So what can you tell me about Overtown Miami? What was your childhood like? Oh, up? man, growing up in Overtown, man, I grew up in the Four Cent, you know what I'm saying? So the Four Cent was a drug hole that my family, like, owned. And um, that's where we sold $4 rocks the size of the nail on my, my, my pinky. We sold $4 rocks the size of the nail on my pinky. And that, 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 that Four Cent hole is where I learned, learned the game at. That's where I learned everything that I, that I obtained from the streets, you feel me? Uh, my brothers, my cousins, my homies, my uncles, you feel me? Like my whole family, we was a crime family, you know what I'm saying? So niggas see me right now and think it's like peaches and cream and I be laughing and joking and happy and giving out princess treatment and just, you know what I'm saying, being like that. But at one point in time, I was a real demon. You understand what I'm saying? I'm, I'm a, um, I just, I just, you know what I'm saying, been through so much in life and seen so much and did so much to where it was like, I felt like as if one day if I don't get my mind right and make that transition, I'm gonna miss out on the opportunity of a lifetime. And that's the opportunity that I got right now. So I, I seen this coming. I seen it coming like, you know, in a dream. And I just knew that I had to switch up the way I move and switch up the way I was operating to be able to be in the position that I am in right now in life. Oh, that's real. Yeah. At what point would you say you decided to jump off the porch? Shit, I, I shit, the porch jumped off of me, god damn it. I, <laughs> the porch jumped up off of me. I was, I was a young nigga, I was about 12, 13 years old when I came off the porch. I used to run errands for my uncle and my brother them. That's how I started, you know what I'm saying? And then I started hustling, I was the watch out at first. I just used to watch out for the police. In Miami, we call the police nine. So I was the, I was the young nigga on the corner that would just be posted up and when I see the police coming, I had to say nine coming down. You know what I'm saying? So that was my first job in the streets. I was a watch out. And I used to have to tell all the like niggas that was on the block that nine was coming down and they hired me at the age of 13 because they know the police would overlook me. And that's how I was always to keep, that's how I was always able to keep the police from being up on niggas as quick as they would usually be because they never even knew. I was just like the little young decoy. Nine coming down, everybody get right. They get that sack off them, get them guns off them. They had that time because I've been and gave them the heads up. And then that's where I started at, and then I, I went from there to just a whole, you know what I'm saying, whole gangster. For sure, for sure. Yeah. What would you say life in Miami like was back then versus now? Oh, man, it was, it was drug dealing, killing. It, I, I, that's what I like to say. Every hood the same to me. Everything that go on in the communities of Overtown, going in the communities of Chicago, in LA, in New York, and every, it's all the same shit. Every, every hood is the same. We all product of our, products of our environment. You feel me? The government knew what they was doing when they took us out of slavery and put us, put us in these ghettos and in these hoods, and then they gave us the dope. And it's everything the same. It ain't no difference. What I go through, what I've been through in my hood, and I, I go through ain't no different from what little JoJo go through over there on Bankhead. Ain't no different from what little Marquis go through over there on, on, on Grape Street. There ain't no difference. We all, we all go through the same shit. It's all the same ignorant shit. Drug dealing, killing, we killing each other. We selling each other drugs. We selling dope to our own family members, our own auntie. Now I used to sell dope to my sister. You know what I'm saying? I used to sell a dope to my sister and then cuss her out for asking me for money to buy the dope. 
You understand what I'm saying? So it's like the same shit, all that shit go on. And every, it's all the same ignorant shit. Just a bunch of ignorant shit, you feel me? That shit, that's the same shit. I lost, my brother got 30 years in prison. You feel me? 25 mandatory. I lost him to that shit. My cousin got 28 years. My homeboy got 15 years. Another one, eight of my homeboys all got caught on indictment together. They all got life sentences. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, that's, that's the shit. That's the shit that I come from, the shit that landed. All my people, even me, I was, I, several times, you know what I'm saying? About it. I just thank God that I'm able to be able to sit here alive and free with a clean face. I ain't never had to rat on no nigga or no nothing like that. And I done faced it a life sentence before. I done faced it 15 years before. 10 years. I was just facing 10 years in January. I beat that shit in trial. You know what I'm saying? So it's just a blessing to be able to still be alive and free, clean face. I ain't never tell on nobody. I can go in any hood where I want to go. Nobody don't fuck with me. You know what I'm saying? And that's, that's the blessing. I thought being gangster was something, right? But when I was really out there active in the streets, my nigga, I couldn't really go nowhere because I had ops. And I'm always watching my back and looking over my shoulder. When I transition out of that life and put all that shit behind me and, and really like eliminated all my ops because all my ops is eliminated. So once all my ops, God eliminated my ops for me, I ain't really do it. I ain't had to do it. God eliminated all my ops. So when all my ops got eliminated, I was ready to able to roam the streets freely again. And nigga, that was, that was like the most goddamn peaceful shit for me. So I don't really never want to revisit the past or what I did in the hood or what I came. I don't want to glorify that shit. I don't want to even talk about how these, these teardrops ain't just for show. I ain't get these shits because I was listening to Lil Wayne back in the days. Well, because I like the bird, man. Them, this shit really, I really been there, done that. You feel me? Real shit. Real spill. Yeah. So how does it make you feel nowadays seeing snitches get a pass just because of their music or their status? That shit just make me wanna. That shit just make me wanna, goddamn. <laughs> that shit just make me wanna get the six. That shit just make me wanna get six nines and kill all the motherfuckers. That's what it make me wanna do. You get that? They just it call make, him in, uh, in but you, But you hear what you, they don't, don't let this go over your head. This snitching shit make me wanna get six nines and blow all these motherfucking brains out. But I ain't going back to that. Whatever these people wanna do with snitches and accepting it, that's they business. You understand what I'm saying? Long as long as it ain't no snitches in my circle, I don't care. You know what I'm saying? Whatever they doing with them rats, that's them. They wanna play around with the rats. They can go to the cheese factory and play around with the rats. All they got damn want to. I don't fuck with the mice. I, I ain't never even grow up watching Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse. I ain't never liked it, no Minnie Mouse and Mickey Mouse ass shit. You understand what I'm saying? I, I fuck with Tom and Jerry because I like when motherfucking Tom always used to try to get Jerry ass. You understand what I'm saying? But all that Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse ass, motherfucking Disneyland ass shit, I ain't never fuck with that. You understand what I'm saying? I ain't never fuck with that. How'd it make you feel to finally see 6 9 get a little bit of street justice? <sighs> to be honest with you, I ain't feel shit. When I seen it, I kept scrolling. I ain't even watch it. It's not, it's, not, it's, 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 it's not entertaining to me. You understand what I'm saying? Because first of all, it took too long for somebody to do something to him. Then second of all, you ain't really do nothing to him. He was able to get up off the ground. You understand what I'm saying? So for him to be able to get off the ground, you ain't do nothing to him. Because he got up off the ground. So you ain't do nothing to 6 9 So that's why I don't even want to, when, when everybody talking about it, I ain't even want to see, I just, see this? This me scrolling up. I ain't even scroll up with my thumb. I put my back arm on it. I don't want to see that. You know? Nah, that's real. Yeah. When would you say you started to dabble in the music? My nigga, let me tell you some crazy shit, right? My mama, my mama is, 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 is real Christian. She one of them real Christian, old fashioned Christians, right? So when me and my big brother, free pitch black, free pitch black, free pitch black until he free. Right, me and him, I was five years old. We did a, a play at the church, a Christmas play. We sung Ron DMC Christmas song. We did the Ron DMC Christmas song. I was five years old, right? We performed that motherfucker, right? The whole church stood up and gave us a standing ovation at the end. I'm five years old, I'm getting a standing ovation. Nigga, I've been chasing that high since I was five years old. I've been chasing them standing ovations since I was five years old. So when I went from five, when I seen that at five, 
this music shit was in me. I knew I had to be a superstar. I knew I was going to be a superstar at that very moment. So I've been chasing this shit since, since the youth. You feel me? No, that's real. So when would you say you started to, in your words, feel that you was getting what you was deserving at this music shit? When I, when I seen my first check. When I seen my first check off my first show, I, can't, I remember that shit like it was yesterday. I had a song called Shotgun, right? It was called Shotgun. I put that shit out in, in Miami. It was only buzzing in Miami, though. So a nigga from down south, because we got, we got a part of Miami that we call down south. So a nigga from down south, he booked me. His name was Bird. The nigga booked me. He called me. He said, hey, man, I want you to come perform at my birthday party. He like, my girl, love that song. I was like, shit, okay, I'm, I'm ready to come do this shit for free. He like, man, I'll give you 250. I say, 250? He like, hell yeah, bro. Come with all your people, man. I got you 250. Let's do it. I said, all right, bet. I went down there. I took like 20 niggas with me, dog. We get down there. When we get to the door, at the shit, I'm like, I'm outside. He come outside to get me. He said, all right, bro, cool. I'll let you in for free, but your 20 homeboys got to pay $10 a piece. And I'm like, well, damn. My 20 homeboys broke. We still in the struggle. So when he gave me the 250, I said, well, can I get the 250 first? And he said, okay, I'm going to give you the 250. He gave me the 250. I gave him 200 of the 250 back and kept the 50. And I paid for my dogs to get in. So that's when I really felt like I was that nigga. Because I'm like, damn, I just got paid to do a show. I didn't even think about he just swindled me and I had to really take the money he gave me to pay for my dog to get in. All I'm saying is I got 250 for a motherfucking show. Nigga can't tell me nothing. Yeah. And then that shit went from 250 to 2500 to 5000 to 10000 to right now if a bitch called me and say, Chaotic, we want you to come and, and piss in our bathroom at this goddamn juke joint and goddamn Pensacola, Florida. Bitch, I need 15 motherfucking thousand right now, nigga, to come get them hoes princess treatment. 15000 let's go. That was going on. That's what's going on. Straight up. Just like that. So talk about Dime Piece with Rick Ross. How did that record come together? You know what's crazy? Dime Piece came along because I was fucking with a real Dime Piece at that time. I had a, everything I said in that song about she, she, she do whatever for me, she got my back, she support me, she 100, that's what I had. I had a real good girl. I fucked her up real bad. I did her real wrong, but she was a real good girl. That was the best girl I ever had to this day other than them. Other than them, other, outside of them, that was the best thing that I ever had, was her. And I fucked up real bad on her, but she was real good to me. So I made a song about her called Dime Piece. The song was so motherfucking hard and it was buzzing so hard in Miami and in South Florida and throughout Florida, Ross hit me up. I ain't called Ross. I ain't called, I, I ain't called Ross. Ross called me, personally. Huh. I'm like, hello? Huh. Who this? Huh. Thought somebody was playing on my phone, I hung up. He called back, what's up? I'm like, who is this? The boss. I'm like, Rose? He said, huh? I say, what's the play? He said, I want to get on that song. You know, I got, all right, let's do it, bum bum. Pulled up to the studio with the session, we dropped the song, put the remix out, the rest was history. I still make bread off that song quarterly right now to this day. That's real. Yeah. What do you feel like the importance of sticking together when people from your hood is? I mean, I don't think that's important. Because sometimes the people from your hood be the ones who gonna snake you out. I just think that the importance of, of the, what the importance, what's important is sticking together with the people who wanna see you win. Sticking together with the people that got your best interest at heart. Sticking with the people that got the mindset of growth and development and prolific prosperity. You understand what I'm saying? Pe speak, sticking with the people that's going to give you the best advice, whether if it hurt your feelings or if it don't. That's what I feel like is important. I don't, and, that's if, and I don't care if they from your hood, if they not from your hood. They could be from the other side. They could be from the side of the hood that's beefing with your hood. It wouldn't even matter. If they good people and they, say, yeah, they got your best interest, that's hard and they ready to ride with you. That's who it is important to stay connected to and joint to the hip with. That's real. I don't give a fuck about Oh, we grew up in the hood. I got plenty of niggas that I grew up in the hood with that I don't even talk to no more. And then I got plenty of niggas from the hood that I grew up with that I talk to every day. So it don't matter if we from the same hood, same project, same this, same that. I don't give a goddamn, cause goddamn bitch, where I'm trying to go at is not in the motherfucking hood cause I've been here long enough. 
No, for real. How much of an appreciation did you have for Ross for reaching out for you? Oh man, like I would, I would forever appreciate Ross because that's not the only thing that he ever did for me. Ross showed me a lot of love, and a lot of niggas be like thinking like, oh, uh, he should have signed you, or he should have this, he should. Man, just fucking with me is enough for me, man. You feel me? Because I done made a lot of money just off of me being able to be at Ross' house or be in the car with Ross or be in a section with Ross or just being able to call Ross or text Ross or promote and bail left for Ross. Just the things that he gave me access to do with him made me a lot of bread. So it's like, shit, I, I, I'm appreciative forever. I'm at, forever in debt to a real nigga, you feel me? What is the meaning of Bula? Better off out of love anyway. Bula came about from when the first, first bitch that broke my heart started the Bula movement. You understand what I'm saying? That's, that's the bitch broke my heart the, the badly to a million motherfucking pieces. Ho was clumsy as fuck. I let the bitch hold my heart. She fumbled with the shit and dropped it. Broke the shit. Clumsy ass hoe. And the thing about it was when she told me that Nigga, I don't want you no more. I don't love you no more. I don't fuck with you no more. You tell you love me, I'm done. And I'm like, you know what? That's cool, because I'm better off out of love anyway. Bula. Mm. Left it on that note. And that came from me. The spirit gave me that. It was the spirit that gave me that. When she told me all that, oh, nigga, this, that, and the third. And I'm like, oh, you don't need my mouth. I'm better off out of love anyway. And, and then it came. Bula. That was the spirit speaking through me. Heartbroken, hurt, full of resentment and anger. And, 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 I, and I felt, and I felt uh, let down and, she, and it was the pain. Pull up, that's why when I said pull up, you hear that pain come out of that, you feel me? For sure. Yeah. It lets you know that these hoes for everybody. That's why I don't fuck with the hoes. These hoes is for everybody. A hoe can't get princess treatment out of me. These hoes ain't for everybody. But you know, you wanna know what's crazy, bro? You see these beautiful women on the side of me and behind me? It was women like this that changed my whole trajectory on the way I looked at these women. You feel me? And it, and it, and it showed me, it's levels to this shit. It showed me it's bitches out here, it's hoes out here, it's young ladies out here, it's grown women out here, it's queens, it's, 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 it's princess. It showed me the difference. It's real women still out here circulating through the universe. You know what I'm saying? Everybody ain't hoes. Everybody ain't pop locking and dropping, bouncing on every nigga dick for money. Every, every woman ain't out here trying to use niggas for their money. You got real women that's still out here catering to their men. You got real women that's still out here submitting and, and, and rubbing feet and holding a nigga down. And you got women that still let you flip their taxes. You got women that still getting rental cars for niggas in their name. You got women still maxing out their credit cards for niggas, believing in niggas, seeing the potential in niggas. You understand what I'm saying? Everybody ain't the out, out to use. All these women ain't out to use and abuse you. And that's why these, that's why they, that's why they, that's why they, they here. This, this is what started the princess treatment movement. I'm giving princess treatment to the women that deserve it. Everybody don't deserve princess treatment. You understand what I'm saying? Princess treatment is not a financial thing. It's not just about money. It's being able to stimulate a woman mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, and financially. If you're not touching that top five, then you're not giving princess treatment. Because you can have a nigga breaking bread with a female giving her money, but hurting her every single day with the way he moved and the way he talked to her and, and, and the way he is. Well, he probably ain't fucking her right. Well, he don't talk to her right. He don't motivate her, but he just give her money. That ain't princess treatment. Or you might have a nigga that just talk, say all the right stuff to the woman, but never do nothing for her. Never bring her a flower, never buy her a gift, never spend not one day, ain't never paid a phone bill, ain't never did nothing. That ain't princess treatment. He, or you might have a nigga just emotionless. He ain't talking to her the right, damn, baby, you look good today. Damn, baby, I love your hair. Damn, baby, I love your eyelashes. Damn, baby, I love, he ain't making enough, you understand what I'm saying? So it's like, if you ain't hitting them with the all five, if you ain't hitting them with that top five, mentally, spiritually, physically, financially, emotionally, then you bullshit. That's not princess treatment. And that's what I'm giving. 
princess treatment to the women of the world that deserve it. That's why you see these beautiful ladies back here. All these women that you see behind me and with me and all these women that you see me on social media giving princess treatment to, these are women that appreciate good men. These are women that caters to good men. These are independent women with hearts that are genuine, that are loving, that are caring, that take things in consideration, that compromises, that didn't give up on love. These are the women that are not moved by the things they see on these social media platforms. These are the women that believe in themselves and believe in the men that they deal with. So K.I., What's, What's your relationship me? status today? I mean, you can see, man, my relationship status, man. These are my queens. These are my beautiful girls right here, man. These are the girls that hold me down. They take care of me. They do everything for me, man. They eat my butt. All of them. They eat my butt. Back to back. Sometimes together, sometimes they take turns. They the ones who make me feel like the king that I am. You understand what I'm saying? Without them, I wouldn't be nothing. For sure. Yeah. So how do you know if a woman is worthy of eating your butt? Yeah, well, the only way I can know that you're worthy of eating my butt is, is by the way, the way you treat me. Before you can even be able to eat my butt, you understand what I'm saying? You got to cater to me. You got you to show me that you're willing to sacrifice for me. You got to show me that you love me. You got to show me that you're going to put work in for me, that you're going to ride for me, that you're going to be loyal to me, that you're going to be faithful to me. And once you show me all of these things, then I will allow you to eat my butt. But that's the only way you can give me booty head. Because you ain't giving me no booty head if you ain't a real rider. If you, if you don't show me that you're ready to ride or die by me, you cannot give me no booty head. Straight up. Straight up. With the viral shit going on right now, uh -huh. how you feel about everybody trying shrooms? You try shrooms before? Yeah, I tried shrooms before. To be honest with you, <clears throat> when I had done try the first time I tried shrooms was actually the first time I got my butt ate. Because I, I, I really wasn't with it. The girl tried to get me when, when I was like just drunk. I'm like, man, don't play with me. You ain't what I look like. You think I'm like that? I don't play like that. She got me on them shrooms and she finessed me two times. Got me. You feel what I'm saying? The first time I was laying on my back, she caught me on, on the laying on my back and like did me like this here. Hit me with one of these moves. She got me. I fainted. You understand what I'm saying? Came back to life like, damn, I ain't, you know what I'm saying? Sobered up, bitch, you better not tell nobody I let you do that. You feel me? The second time she got me, she ain't had to, she ain't had to do this, 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 that round. I did it on my own. You feel what I'm saying? So, yeah, she got me on them shrooms. So that's why, like, really, after that experience on them shrooms, like, I just stopped taking shrooms. I don't even play around with them no more. So do you advise other niggas to try shrooms? I mean, if you, if you was with the bitch that I was with when, when you tried shrooms, then, hey, you know what I'm saying, to eat your zone. But I, 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 would never, I would never encourage nobody to do no drugs because I don't do no drugs no more. I don't That's do real. nothing no more. I'm completely sober. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't do nothing. So I ain't going to never advise nobody to do something that I ain't going to do. That's real. You know? What inspired your sobriety? <laughs> Shit, I can tell you several stories about that. Like just my sobriety, being when I used to be drunk and high, I was I was a hothead. I used to, you know, I used to, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like I on that whatever I do whatever when I'm. <sighs> come here, come here, come here. That's how I was on that oil and that. And pills and all that. I used to run down on shit. You feel me? And, and especially with girls, I was so disrespectful. Look here. I used to use bitch, hoe, puss ass, all that. Psh, that shit used to flow off my tongue so smoothly when I used to be drunk. Puss ass, regular ass, regular ass, hoe. You better stop motherfucking playing with me. And I just was a disrespectful, horrible individual when I used to be on all that shit. And, uh, and it was just like one day I woke up and wanted to be a better person. One day I woke up and I say, man, God ain't going to continue to keep blessing me if I continue to keep being this horrible person. You understand what I'm saying? I was a vampire. So I just got sober and I was just like, I ain't never going back down that tunnel no more. You feel me? Because that was like the demon chaotic. That's how I got that name chaotic. That was be on demon time. I don't want to be like that no more. I just want to be a, a beautiful individual now. You know what I'm saying? I be taking... 
skincare products and putting them on my face and stuff like that. Like, I be putting masks on my face. Like, I used to put masks on my face and ride down on ops. Now I put masks on my face to keep my skin clean, clear, and under control. You feel what I'm saying? I put the pretty, the pretty bitch stuff on my face so I could look good. And I used to put masks on my face to do bad. Now I put masks on my face to look good. You feel me? That's real. Yeah. What inspires your new look? I see you cut the wicks off. <clears throat> so really, people don't know. People think that, okay, when I, when I took out my goals and started working out, that was just because I wanted to um, put myself in a position where I can get bigger um, television opportunities because I hadn't got into the, the television world. So I said, I'm going to take out the goals, start working out, get fine, because that'll open up more doors for me in the television world. Bomb. Now, I, I was really never going to cut my wicks because I always felt like my wicks was my strength. I had that Simpson mentality. Fast forward, I was on, out on bond for five years. Recently in January, I had to go to trial because I was facing 10 years. I was either going to take the 10 years or I was going to take that shit to trial. I ain't going to take no 10 years. So what it was, my lawyer told me, hey, chaotic, because that's what my lawyer called me. He called me by my, my stage name because he respect me as an artist. Some niggas' lawyers call them by their government name because they, that, that's what they see. They see the real them. Like, nigga, you're not um, young shoot em up, bang, bang. You're, you're Darian. You understand what I'm saying? But me, it's like, oh, we respect you as chaotic. You know what I'm saying? In and out the courtroom. So my lawyer say chaotic. You're going on a jury trial. You know what I'm saying? You're going, it's going to be 12 that's judging you. He like, these dreads, I think that it's in, a, in your best interest to take them off. You understand what I'm saying? And then he was like, you can always put them back in, but, you know, cut them just for this trial because I don't want you to go in this trial looking like what they trying to paint you as. And I was like, you know what? Damn. I looked at myself in the mirror. I'm like, damn, I got all these tats. Okay, I'm glad I got the goals out. I said, you know what, fuck it, I'm gonna cut the wicks. I'm facing 10 years. If I lose trial, I can get 20. They wanna give me 10. If I lose trial, I can get a dub. You know what, let me go in here and get right. I chopped my shit, went to trial, I beat trial. After I beat trial, I was so happy, that's when I posted the pictures of me with my hair gone. Because I was never gonna show people my hair gone. I was really gonna do trial, I beat it, I was gonna put the dreads back in, but bomb. I was so happy that I beat trial. I felt like when I cut off my dreads, <clears throat> I cut off all those, ad, the, the, those old demons. I feel like cutting off my dreads took off all that bad karma, took off all them old demons, all them old hoes that I fucked. You know what I'm saying? That hoe that gave me chlamydia that time and I had to take them two pills. I got that puss ass hoe up out my system. Every op nigga that I had done shot at or any nigga that got laid the rest behind the hands of whatever it was that pulled that trigger on them, I felt all that let go and when I walked out that courtroom and I beat them charges I felt so relieved I said you know what I'm gonna stay with this new look I'm gonna stay with this new me bomb I posted it I went viral right then and there overnight I became bigger than prison bay I became bigger than prison bay every woman in the world right now I, I remember I used to get left on red now I'm leaving bitches on red you understand what I'm saying? I'm leaving, I'm leaving them on red now. I used to get left on red. I'm leaving them on red. Look at me. Look at me. You understand what I'm saying? Look at me. I could be a model. I could be a model. You heard me? But I'm loyal and faithful to who I'm loyal and faithful to. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody don't deserve. It, it, just because I got a new look and I got new, new females and new women all across the world, wanting to be down and wanting to tap into me, what I'm going to give in, I ain't tender dick. I ain't giving in. I'm staying down with those who stay down with me. Like I said, every woman don't deserve to give me booty head. You got to prove yourself. Real spill. At what point would you say you decided to mature and cater more so to the women with your music versus fueling the streets? <clears throat> Listen, man, when I met, you see these beautiful women? When I met, some of the most beautiful souls that I ever met in my life, it changed my whole thought process on women because I was really just running into and dealing with no good whores. 
all, I just, my luck was so bad, I just kept running the whores, whores that take my money, fuck on me, keep it moving, hoes that's draining me, chasing me for my paper, ooh, he got driven, he got this, he got that, ooh, they want this, they want tricking, alcohol, whores want to party, take trips, fuck me, fuck my homeboy, fuck this rapper, fuck that rapper, fuck me, fuck, 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 till they catch your STD and die from it. That's what I was dealing with, whores, and I didn't see no future with settling down with no woman. I just seen myself sleeping with whores for the rest of my life because that's all I came encounter with. And then it was like God just like pulled through for me and blessed me with some beautiful souls. And it gave me a different outlook on life. When I seen like how they cater, when I seen how how they, how they support, how they show love, how they believe, how loyal you they is. And then when I seen that with them, then I started to, it was like, I started to find out and figure out it's the community of these type of women in this world. They out here, they exist. And it made me say, you know what? You can't let what you done been through with hoes turn you against these great women that's in the world because they don't deserve that. So I said, you know what, I'm going to be the spokesman for the good women. I'm going to be the spokesman for the loyal you women. I'm going to be the spokesman for the real women in the world that eat butt. And that's what I'm doing. I'm riding for them. I'm giving them princess treatment. My album, I got an album coming out in April. My album is called The Provider. You understand what I'm saying? Because I, I, I'm a provider. That's what I am. I'm a provider. And, 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 and the reason, the reason I, I, I chose being a provider for my um, for the name of my album is because pro being a provider is just as well as princess treatment. They both they synonyms. Princess treatment provider is a synonym. Same rules apply. You can't provide just financially. You got to provide mentally, spiritually, emotionally, physically, and financially. You understand what I'm saying? That's a full 360 degree. You got to be able to do that. And me, that's what I do. I provide, ask, you can ask any one of them. And they'll tell you. Them, the other ones out there, the other ones over there, ask any of them out here in the world. You know what I'm saying? I'm a provider. Family, sisters, mamas, even, even my homies, I'm gonna provide. I'm gonna hold it down. So at the end of the day, you know, that's how I, how I put my thing out to the world and that's what really changed my whole mentality on things because just as well as I provide in all five of those ways, they provide for me in all five of those ways, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, physically, financially. They're gonna pour back into me just like I pour into them. And that's why my album is called The Provider and also because it's Afro R&B. I created my own genre with my, with, with my work of art. My work of art that I created is Afro R&B. So if you ever hear somebody say, oh, I got an Afro R&B song, they biting my swag because I invented the genre of Afro R&B. I created that. So if you tune into the album, you're gonna get a full understanding of where I'm coming from. And you're gonna see what being a provider really is. How did you get your start in reality TV? And did you ever expect to be on TV? Bruh. I ain't even gonna lie to you, right? I always knew I was gonna be on TV. I always knew I was, I, I feel like reality TV too small for me. I'm bigger than reality TV. You dig what I'm saying? But I, 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 I love being in front of the camera so much and I love displaying my acting skills to the world so much that I do reality TV because I am reality TV. Because what you see is what you get. This is my reality. This is my reality. You understand what I'm saying? I had to smell my flower so I know I ain't dead. I had to smell this flower so I know I ain't dead. Boy, this is my reality. I put that on that thing I love. Smell the flower, baby. Smell the flower. Smell the flower. Smell that flower. Smell that flower. Smell it. Smell it. Yeah, we not dead. We alive. You understand what I'm saying? This is my reality TV. So when I came home from prison, I came home, I came home broke. I ain't had nothing. I had a rap buzz that was out of this world before I went to prison. Went to prison, buzz died down. Kodak had none, just came, Kodak came out when I went in. He done took off, 
he popping now. He done took all my fans. He done took my, my deal. I had a deal on the table with Atlantic. He got that. And that's my little brother. I love Kodak. But when, I, when my wave was going, when I went down, Kodak came. And boy, that young nigga took off. I love Kodak. Shout out to Kodak. That's my little brother. I love him to death. Solid young nigga. He took off. Bomb. So now I come home. I'm broke. You dig what I'm saying? I'm like, damn, how I'm finna get my shit back popping? I ain't got no money. All I had was an iPhone. And I had, uh, got on Instagram and I seen DC Young Fly on there, turning up, wild. And I see him going crazy on the gram, getting all type of views, comments, everything like that. I say, oh shit, DC Young Fly popping on the gram. Look at this. I say, oh, you know what? I ain't got no money. I can't get no studio time. I can't do no nothing right now. You know what I'm finna do? I'm finna start popping shit on the gram. I'm about to start wilding out on the gram. So I just started wilding, talking shit on the gram every day. Next thing you know, I'm viral within 60 days, bro. That's why I tell a nigga, my nigga, if you do something consistent, bro, two months, 60 days, you do something consistent for 60 days, my nigga, that shit have changed your whole motherfucking life, my nigga. I worked out 60 days straight, and that shit changed my whole life, and I, and I, and I never stopped working out from there because my body had got conditioned and trained to, 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 to do that. You understand what I'm saying? My muscles had the memory. Same thing, I came home 60 days, bro. I'm viral within 60 days. Get what? I'm only home two months. I get a call from Love and Hip Hop. Felicia Monet, she was working for Love and Hip Hop Miami in Miami. Hit me and say, Chaotic, you interested in doing on reality TV? Get what I tell them. I say, I am reality TV. Had to smell my flower to make sure I ain't dead. I, just, I told her, I am reality TV. You heard me, bomb. She said, we want to have a meeting with you. I sat down with them, they were telling me that they needed somebody with, they wanted an artist that had a story and had personality. Because they had so much drama, they wanted to bring somebody with some personality to the, like make it more alive or make it more lit. And then they know I had a story from being in the streets, from doing music, in and out of prison, in and out of jail. I had done been shot 17 times. So they knew like, the first time I got shot, I got shot 15 times. The second time I got shot, I got shot twice. So they know I got a mean story to tell. They know my brother them in and out of prison. They know, they know, they know what was going on. So they tapped in with me and they was like, we want you to come on our platform and, and tell your story and turn up. And the rest is history. Did you ever expect it to be a huge success the way it was though? I, I, I honestly knew it would be a huge success because you know why I knew? Because I know my story was real. You can't fake this. Like if you go, like I, my hospital records is on my Instagram page. You go look at my hospital records, it'll tell you I got shot in my bilateral thigh, uh, my, my, my bilateral uh, thighs, my lower back, my scalp, and my face. It'll tell you that. When you go look through my, when you, 12 shots hit my lower extremities. These all around this down here is your lower extremities. 12 of the shots hit me here. Two of the shots hit me here. Shot hit me here. Shot hit me across my face. Two, I got shot two times in this knee. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I still got bullets in me. I got three bullets in me right now while I'm sitting right here on the porch. But I just smelled my flower and I ain't dead. So the ops ain't do a good job. They damn sure enough ain't do a motherfucking good job because I'm here. And get what? I'm alive and I ain't got no more ops. Where they at? You understand what I'm saying? So. I knew it was gonna be a success because by me going through everything I went through and I ain't dead, by me going through everything I went through and I ain't got a life sentence, and I'm sitting here jumping off the porch with y'all, I knew it was gonna be a success. That means God had that in store for me. And what God got for you ain't nothing, no man, no woman, no animal, no, no natural disaster, no nothing can stop or take away what God got for you was already online, was already online for you, was your fate, was your destiny, ain't nothing gonna take that away from you. All you gotta do is keep getting up, keep living, keep grinding, and, 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 you, gonna, and you gonna catch right up to everything that, got, that, that, that God got to offer for you. That's real. What you filming right now? Loving Hip Hop Atlanta. <laughs> Loving Hip Hop Atlanta. On there with <laughs> Spice them and Erica Mendez and Safari and all them cutting up bad, cutting up bad, and, 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 and it's gonna air sometime this year, cutting up bad. Then on top of that, I'm filming my own, I, I, I'm filming my own like, you know what I'm saying, show. But I'm doing my show on my Facebook and my um, YouTube. You feel me? I got, shout out to my, 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 my circle of, of, of 
of actors and influencers. You know what I'm saying? I got my boy Smiles P. I got my boy Ferragamo, Monster, Georgia, and a slew of other people. You know what I'm saying? I got my dogs from Grind Money Global, my partners, like we all just we we about to we about to we about to go crazy on some content shit, on some movie making shit. Then I got the music shit. Then I'm a writer. I be writing for some of the hottest motherfuckers in the game, but I keep my my lip zipped. I ain't telling on nobody because people don't want nobody to know that they writing for them. I, I, I do it for the money. I don't do it for, oh, hey, I didn't wrote that song. Oh, let me just see my residual income. I don't need nobody even count my pockets anyway. That's how the IRS come. It's right there, how the, the IRS. Okay, I didn't wrote that song. That song did how much? Now the IRS knocking at my door. <laughs> Uncle Sam. You open the door. Hey, I'm Sam I am. No, the fuck you ain't closed on him. He ain't knowing none of my business. Real spill. You know? Where do you see yourself in five years and what's some of the goals you got set to get there? I see that I can smell this flower still, so I'm still alive. You heard me? So in five years, you asking me why I see myself? I ain't even gonna lie to you. I can't even see that far. You know why I can't see that far? Because what God got for me from now to five years can be so major and so big that I can't even see it or fathom it. You understand what I'm saying? So where I see myself in the next five years is where, in a place wherever God got for me. Whatever God got in store for me is what's gonna be in the next five years. I can't say. I can't say, oh, I see myself in movies like Will Smith, or I see myself the number one selling artist in the world, or I see myself, I, I can't say that. I ain't God. Cause I could be sitting here telling you a whole bunch of lies. Or I could be sitting here telling you a whole bunch of stuff that's this small. I could say, oh, I'm going to be a super big TV star. My God might say, no, you're going to be a super big mega movie star. You're going to be bigger than Will Smith. You know what I'm saying? I could be putting myself lower than I'm going to be. Or I could be putting myself higher than I could be. Or I could just be lying. So I don't know where I'm going to be at in the five years because I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. So whatever God got in store for me is where I'm going to be. So whatever you see from this day forward coming from me, just know that that's what God blessed me with. What else you working on right now? Man, I ain't gonna lie. I'm thinking about making an OnlyFans, right? But then what I was thinking about doing with my OnlyFans, because I ain't want to post the shit and go public with it. Like, okay, I got an OnlyFans. Like, God damn, why y'all want to hate on me when I want to put my little penis out there like that to the world? So I ain't want to really do it like that. I'm thinking about, I was like, okay, I'm gonna make the OnlyFans and I'm gonna just DM it to bitches. Like, all of them bitches that's in my DM, like, because I got, bro, I probably got about a thousand hoes right now in my DM from blue checks to red checks to yellow checks to pink checks. I ain't even know they had checks different colors. But that's how many bitches that's in my DM. So I'm thinking like, damn, what if I make the OnlyFans and just have somebody from my team just DM it to every bitch and say subscribe. Now I got a thousand bitches that subscribe to my shit and I charge all them hoes $29.99. I'd be doing kind of fine. You feel what I'm saying? So I was, that's, that's something that's in the making. I, like I said, I got my show from Instagram to Facebook. Uh, uh, from, uh, from Facebook to, to, to YouTube that I'm, that, I'm, that I'm starting shooting next week. I got Love and Hip Hop Atlanta coming. I'm a serial entrepreneur. I got a slew of different businesses that I got. You feel what I'm saying? Um, uh, I got my album coming out, music, um, songwriting. You know what I'm saying? These beautiful women. Like, I just got so much going on. Like, I got a lot on my plate. And I'm a motivational speaker. Every day I motivate somebody with the words that come out my mouth. So that's another thing I am. I just got a lot of stuff going on. Probably gonna start a podcast soon. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, shit, that's just, I'm really hoping the government come with another scam that nigga really hit. You feel me? Like some old PPP type shit. We need a natural disaster or something. Some FEMA type scam, some something. Cause I tried that TurboTax shit over the tax. That shit wasn't hitting on nothing. Yeah. They say Florida got the best sauce. And I'm a Florida boy. I've be, I been, I been swimming in that Florida water my whole life. You heard me? Real yeah. spill. Natural bodies or BBLs? Doesn't matter. As long as it look good and it feel good, I'm with it. Of course, as a man, we're going to say we would prefer a natural body. But, I mean, I don't knock the BBLs, baby. Get yourself together. Get fine. However you got to do it. I feel like if a girl go buy some ass and titties, that's just like me buying a chain and a watch. 
It's all the same to me. Anything that'll make you look better, do your thing, baby. Just don't, don't fuck yourself up. Don't do it. Don't overdo it. Just do it the way it's nice and put together and it look real good. Don't go over the top with it. Because I understand, man, you know, it's, it's hard on women. Everybody want to look, all, women right now, everybody want to look perfect. Everybody want to look their best. You know, she, I don't, she, she don't want to be walking around here looking all wopsided and look, he's over there looking like a goddamn motherfucking genie out the bottle. So I respect it. Whichever way you want to go, baby, do what you want to do when it comes to your body. As long as it don't affect your mind, I'm cool. Have you ever seen plastic surgery affect a woman's mind? Have I ever seen plastic surgery affect a woman's mind? Hell yeah! A million motherfucking times. You don't see these bitches' mind fucked up. Majority of these plastic motherfucking Barbie dolls' minds is fucked up. Bitch feel like, nigga, I spent all this money on my body to get my body right. I am perfectly sculptured. You got to pay for me. You understand what I'm saying? That's why they say he want to fuck the new body. The new body cost. Well, I feel the same way, baby. And I got my body. They put, I put it in work to get mine. You laid on the table and paid for yours. I put it in work to get mine. You understand what I'm saying? So I feel like my body was more expensive than yours at the end of the day. So none of that shit don't fly over here. You understand what I'm saying? But it, definitely a lot of women does let that shit go to their motherfucking brain. They let it fuck up their prefrontal cortex. See, what happens is when the motherfucking bitches get that surgery, it's like something where that doctor stick that shit in their ass and they slide up through their motherfucking titties and up their neck, through their mouth, to their motherfucking prefrontal cortex, it fucks up the decision making part of their goddamn brain. And these bitches can't make the motherfucking right decision. Yeah. So, so, so my advice to some of these women, if you're going to get your body done, baby, please do not let it affect your prefrontal cortex. This is the decision making part of your brain. Don't motherfucking get your body done and walk around here making the wrong decisions, bitch. What's some advice you'll give to the youth right now? Oh man, the advice I would give to the youth is whatever it is that you want to be in life, whatever it may be that you want to be in life, don't let nobody tell you that you can't be that. Whatever it is, because I believe that anything you want to do with your life, if you do it consistently, it shall flourish. It, it don't matter if it be on a minute level or a mega level. You gonna, you, gonna, you gonna accomplish what you accomplish. So just whatever it is you wanna be, be that. Whatever it is you wanna do, do that. We in a day and age where shit, it don't matter what the fuck you wanna be or do. God damn it, we in a day and age where goddamn unicorns can motherfucking fly like birds, god damn it. So whatever it is you want in life, whatever it is you wanna be, don't, don't have no regrets, don't have no doubts, don't give a fuck about what nobody say. Chase your dreams and go get what the fuck you want. And you bet not. You, listen to me, I'm still alive. You better not give a fuck about what nobody say on your journey to be what you want to be. That's what I tell the youth. So let's talk about the recent viral video of yours, right? Uh -huh. Where Judge Mathis mistakenly uh -huh. thought your crypto investment was you investing into crypts. Yeah, nah, so see me, I do a little crypto. You feel me? I do a, I do a little crypto. And he thought I was saying, I, 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 I do a little crippy, but I was telling him I do a little crypto. You understand what I'm saying? So I ended up having to tell him I do a little crypto because Judge Mathis was asking me what I do for a living because he was trying to figure out how I was going to pay the girl that had me on the show that was suing me because I fucked up her Airbnb. You understand what I'm saying? So she wanted to sue me about, oh, an Airbnb saying I fucked up an Airbnb. And you know, she was petty and childish, but guess what? I, had, I, I took that as an opportunity to give her princess treatment. Even in, even in the midst of her trying to tear me down and chase me about some money that she didn't even was supposed to get from me because I didn't really do what she said I did, but I had to take that and I still blessed her. I paid her, I had to post, I gave her 3,300, 3, I gave her 4,300. Mm. Extra thousand, go get you a lace front, baby. Mm. Go get you a wig and get it installed. You heard me? Yeah, cause guess what? Guess what? I do a little crypto. Yeah, I do a little crypto. So that little 4,300 wasn't nothing. That's real. What's some of the things that a woman would do that's not worthy of princess treatment? <sighs> Ungrateful, unappreciative, disloyal, 
disrespectful, lying, cheating, conniving, dirty, disgusting women do not deserve princess treatment. And just like the same for men, those same type of men do not deserve king treatment. That's just that on that. You feel me? If you want to go, if you want, if you want princess treatment, and you got those, and you got those um, characteristics about yourself, and you want princess treatment, then go get it from a guy that got those characteristics. Cause you're not gonna get it from me. Cause I got king characteristics. You know what I'm saying? I have values and morals and self-respect. So you're not gonna get that out of me. Never. Not with those type of characteristics. You have to be like-minded. You see these women with me? We're all like-minded. The image and likeness of God, that's what we are. That was real. <laughs> Let's talk about your most viral song, These Holes for Everybody. Let's talk about it. Where did the inspiration come from? The inspiration from These Holes for Everybody came from a hoe that I was fucking with that was for everybody. You know what I'm saying? But I ain't know. I ain't know she was for everybody. I ain't know. That was the hoe that really made me. That was the hoe that, that gave me that chlamydia. I hit up raw and caught chlamydia. I had to go to the doctor the next day and take them two pills and piss that shit out. Dick was burning for two, three days, my nigga. Because she was lying to me, telling me that I was the only nigga she was fucking. You understand what I'm saying? And uh, she burnt me. And I went to the doctor and I had to go get tested. Bro, I was... Well, that was the most scary, I, that was the scariest goddamn moment of my life. Nigga, I seen my life flashing before my eyes in that goddamn doctor's office. Dick burning, you feel me? I'm thinking it's over with. I'm thinking I got everything. Damn, this bitch done gave me herpes, genital warts, crab legs, motherfucking HIV, PV, DC nigga, bacteria, vaginal expressions, and all type of shit I thought I had going on. You heard me? But by the grace of God, bro, I ain't had nothing but the two pills Took them two pills and my dick was back to life, you feel me? And at that very moment, I knew that hoe was for everybody because I'm like, damn, where you, get, where you get the claps from, ho? You out here clapping that ass and gave me the claps. You feel what I'm saying? And at that moment right there, I knew these hoes were for everybody. And I went to the studio. Well, once, once I got back right, my shit was back straight and working good. I went to the studio, dropped these hoes for everybody. And then I, in the original version of these hoes for everybody, I said something about... I said something about, you know what I'm saying? I ain't want to talk about it in my raps because the bitch gave me claps. That was in the original version of these whole fair, but I ain't want to talk about it in my raps because the bitch gave me claps. And my, my manager at that time was like, no, nah, okay, we can't, we can't. We ain't going to let you put that out there to the world like that. And I was like, damn, I was really trying to speak my truth, but they, ain't, they wasn't fucking with it. So I changed that bar, and that's when it came on. My dog hit me up having problems with a bitch. I told that nigga, fuck him, cause these hoes ain't shit. So, but originally it was the claps, bro. What inspired you to reach out to Lucci for the remix? We was on tour together. Me, Lucci, me, Lucci, Black Youngster, rest in peace to Bankroll Fresh, rest in peace to Young Greatness, Free Rollo, Rollo, Schooly, Schooly was on that tour with us. Uh, who else? Shit, it was a lot. It was like, it was like, that, we was that, at that time, we was like the freshman class. So all of us was on the tour, and um, when, every time I used to perform it, Lucci used to like, Lucci, Lucci and Rollo was like the craziest about that record, you know what I'm saying? But Lucci, the one who reached out to me first, like, hey man, I want to jump on that shit. And I was like, yeah. He was like, yeah. And we was in uh, Memphis. We was in Memphis. And I called my engineer and had him to send me the session, and we booked the studio session in Memphis. And this was in the middle of the tour and Lucci jumped on it. And then we started performing a remix before it was even out on the rest of the tour. That's hard. Yeah, Lucci, that's why I say free wide fan Lucci. Lucci. Lucci was always a solid nigga, you know what I'm saying? I fucked with Lucci. But then I fucked with them other guys too. I fucked with, you know what I'm saying, thought them too. So whatever people had going on, I, I stay out of that, you know what I'm saying? I just keep my relationships and keep it moving. Free, I, I want to see everybody free, man. I want to see... Yeah, I want to see love, brotherly love being implemented in these communities and in, in these gangs and in these movements. I don't want to see niggas keep killing each other. I want to see niggas loving each other and holding each other down and coming together like how the Black Panthers was. You feel me? And we need, we need to turn the ops into the people that put us in oppression and turned us against each other. So we need to take the guns off each other and point them at the real enemy instead of each other because we're not each other's enemy.
How long would you say it took you to become mature to that subject though to realize we ain't each other in? Last time I was in prison, you know what I'm saying? I sat I sat with the I, I, I read. It was when I when I really started opening them books, bro. I ain't even gonna lie to you. I got a library in my crib right now. I be I be reading. You know what I'm saying? So when I started opening them books and I started reading and then I came home and I continued studying and looking at certain documentaries and just researching the history of what we where we come from and, and who we are as a people and, 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 and how we became enslaved and you know, all of that type of stuff right there. When I when I really started digging digging in deep on that and researching that type of stuff, it just changed my whole thought process and just like I started looking at things differently. You feel what I'm saying? But I, I, it's, I'm still always on point. I ain't out here slipping and lacking because I know just because I think like that, they don't mean that everybody else think like that. So I still got to be on point. But I'm not taking it there. If I could prevent an altercation between me and another brother, I'm going to prevent that altercation before I, you know what I'm saying, ignite it. Any last words and shout outs? Shout out to my beautiful queens. Shout out to my beautiful queens. My homie, shout out to my team. Free my brother, Pitch Black. Shout out to y'all for letting me jump off the porch. Real spill, man. Chaotic, we appreciate you having me. Bula. Feel like I'm walking in the L. Yeah. If you want a better keeper, yeah. better treat it like a princess.